What's up everyone, you are now about to watch a talk that I gave at a meetup called Web Zurich. The talk was about how to automate everything using GitHub Actions. And before you watch the talk, I want to mention a few things. The first thing is that this talk is almost a year old now and this is why it was possible to do it in front of a live audience and why you can sometimes hear the audience. Uh, why we wore no masks just so that this is clear the second thing is a few things in this video are now outdated like i say that you can manually trigger a github action using the unstar star method now in the meanwhile they have released a much better way to do so it's called workflow dispatch so in 2021 definitely go for that Furthermore, uh, I only got this footage recently and I got it without any slides. So um, I re-recorded the slides in 2021 and tried to make it work together. Um, it's not perfect, but I hope you can still enjoy it and uh, just understand that sometimes when it doesn't make perfect sense, that this is the reason for it. All right, now let's roll the talk. Fun things, there are going to be fun things. Automation can be fun, so um, please give a warm round of applause to Johnny. Yeah, okay, welcome. Like I said, it's about GitHub Actions, but first a little bit about me. Um, I am an indie hacker, that means I make my own apps, and uh, uh, just run these apps and like treat it as a job. The first thing that I do is uh, an app called Bstande, which is the uh, most popular here in Zurich. It's an app for Zurich students. It's a platform where they can chat with each other about certain courses, give courses ratings, see statistics, um, timetable, canteen menus, um, stuff like that. Um, just useful stuff for students. And uh, the other app that I'm doing is called any sticker. Right now it's like an app that allows you to create your custom WhatsApp and Instagram stickers. Um, this is here, this is how it works. Um, right now I'm like trying to land a big shot with a new feature that I'm working on, which is like would allow you to stickerize any image and then like post it. This. And yeah. Hope to release that soon, but uh, if you want, we can create some stickers afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also, the other half of my time I spend at Accelera. Um, you see some other people with an Accelera hoodie here. It's really like uh, the most awesome people to work with because they are both knowledgeable and superhuman. Um, so I love to be there. What we do is we make we are a company that makes MVPs for clients just 100 days. And uh, I think the biggest one that we just did is an app for Yellow, the mobile carrier called Swipe. It's a mobile only um, subscription, so you manage everything through the app. And uh, that was us. And we are currently looking for new projects, so if you would like to give us something to work on, then please reach out to us. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was. Uh, no, that was not a plug. Follow me on Twitter. This is my handle. <laughs> Um, yeah, I try to post about uh, all parts of my workflow of creating these apps and I always try to keep it visual and yeah, sometimes funny things happen like uh, just recently like, I posted like something about how to watch YouTube videos on the command line and then like Alex, he said, okay, but can we do it with audio only so that I can <laughs> listen in the background and then Nico, the, who just presented before, um, came in and like made a full-blown uh, progressive web app out of it, which you should <laughs> definitely check out. So it's like web Zurich driven development. Uh, <laughs> and all, all happens on Twitter, so... Uh, <laughs> okay, now let's get to GitHub Actions. What can you do with it? You can essentially run any code in the cloud. It's not like a web server that runs all the time, but like codes that will also like shuts down at the end, so like scripts. There are various triggers for actions, so you can either trigger them on each time you git push to GitHub, um, you can run manually or in an interval, and there are some other less useful triggers. 
And it has a very generous free tier with GitHub Pro. You can get 50 hours for free every month if you have like this $7 per month subscription. And if they say, okay, well, I actually use GitLab, then that's fine as well. I think most of the things that I will talk about do also apply to GitLab, or if you use another competitor, just a bit uh, using the GitHub syntax in here, but it's many things that also work for GitLab. Okay, so I think the first use case that is by far the most common is that for every commit, you run your test suite, and then what it will do is it will annotate on each commit uh, it either with a green check mark or with a red cross uh, if the checks have failed. And an extension of that is that if the tests are passing, then it will also deploy your code automatically. Um, so if you have a website, it will update it if the test passes automatically. This is what people call continuous integration or continuous deployment, CI, CD. Um, but yeah, this is essentially what it is. Um, I'm going to show an example how to achieve it with GitHub Actions. So we create a new file um, in the GitHub slash workflows folder on your project. You specify the trigger. So in this case, we say triggers on push. We specify jobs and the names. We specify the platform. It can be Linux, Mac, Mac OS, Windows, or even a self-hosted machine. And you specify the steps. In this case, we check out the repository, we run npm install, and the npm test. Here's a quick example. Oops. Um, so as you can see here in this uh, repository, we have this markup, and then we have some extra code for uh, if it's master, then it's also getting published. And this is like an npm package with my ESLint configuration. I just commit this to the repository, and now um, every commit and also every pull request runs uh, this, uh, these tests, and then you can see uh, a green check if it uh, passed. And, uh, I like to use this uh, dependent bot uh, because then a dependency, a dependency that I use upgrades, then I can see it, and I see here, okay, sounds good, seems like I get new feature, and then. Uh, I can just merge that. I've created a new commit and now it should run here in the actions tab again. And now you will see. Oh, <laughs> they changed the UI. I don't know this. Okay. <laughs> and now it will do all the checkout, npm install, npm test, your tests that you <laughs> might have <might, laughs> <might, laughs> And uh, at, at the end, it will uh, publish it. And oh yeah, that's already been it. And uh, just as a side note, if you ask yourself, um, what was going on here with like this weird section? It's like it's like not directly related to GitHub Actions, but it's something that I use very often. Um, so if you publish npm packages or publish iOS or Android apps, one common problem that you have is that you always need to increment the build number, otherwise you will just get an error, you have already used this version number. So you need a way to read the current number and then increment it and then like save it, right? And sometimes this is just hard, you need like some kind of database. So this is why I built something called the uh, increment.build and then you just do a slash and add something like perhaps here. And then, like, every time you call it, it increases, right? And I just use this to, I just uh, do, like, a curl here and set this as the build number in order to prevent um, this error from it. All right. Um, let's go to the second use case, which is to manually trigger an action on GitHub. Um, I run my iOS and Android apps. Uh, the, the builds of them manually. Um, uh, so I work a bit on it and then I say, okay, now I want to release, I start the build. Because if I would do it on each commit, it would be expensive in terms of time and uh, money. Um, 
So I need to use a hack for this because GitHub does not support this feature. <laughs> and the show you have. <laughs> but I did this around my um, GitHub actions, and uh, you can always see what is the trigger. So here the trigger is push because I pushed it uh, executed, and uh, also schedule. So right now there are some scheduled um, things going on, but my iOS builds, they are triggered based on the watch event. So how do you trigger the watch event? Maybe something up here? Which button do I have to press? And you're all wrong, you actually have to press the star button. <laughs> because uh, like four years ago, GitHub changed, like star button and watch button was like the same thing like four years ago on GitHub. Like a legacy thing. So I unstar it and I star it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I trigger my <laughs> iOS build. Um, <laughs> getting these iOS builds to work is like um, <laughs> super hardcore difficult. I, uh, I'm not going to go too deep into this, um, but I wrote a medium post which uh, sh uh, sh gives you some tricks. Um, I can share it at the end. Okay, that's the second trigger that you can use to do it manually. Um, the third use case, which is for me the most exciting one because it has so many possibilities, is that you run your ac actions um, on an interval or like on a schedule. For this, you need to um, first know how to, how to express the schedule in which it should run. And for this, you need to know the, you need to know the cron chop syntax and it's like uh, made up of numbers and stars. Um, zero, star, 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 star means that whenever the clock um, shows zero minutes, then it will trigger the build. And the stars means that it can be any hour, any day, any month, any year. So this is how you would express that it runs every hour. And every day it would be zero, zero, star, star. There are websites that will make it easier for you. And honestly, I also just use this. Um, yeah, you can do things like back up your database. This is what, what I do. I run a crawler. You have just seen a one running. I create automated reports, and you can do even more fun stuff with it. Um, here's an example, um, which I just did, uh, which I just added to my Bhutan app for the purpose of showing it to my task, uh, in my talk. I uh, define a function which just uh, gets uh, the numbers of daily active users from the database. It's not really important how this is calculated and then like post it to a Slack book. Yeah. Just a function that I now want to execute. And uh, I wrap it in this uh, XNS thing so that I can use like uh, top level await kind of so that it will just execute if I run it as a if I run this file as a script. So I commit this to the repository, and I also commit uh, this YAML file. This time we do not specify on push, but on schedule at the top of the file, and we set a cron expression, zero, zero, means whenever the clock is showing zero hours, zero minutes, so it will run always at midnight UTC, so at 1 a.m. and. Uh, yeah, we just uh, add all the steps, yarn, then npx, and ts node, which is like node, but for TypeScript. We set some environment variables that are needed. Um, you can set this, you can keep this environment variable secret. There's, um, you can put them into the GitHub settings, and then they will not be shown. And then uh, the result will be just like you see on the right that I now like, get a notification every day how many users were in there. Pretty simple, 30 lines of code. Maybe you can do it in 10 minutes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is uh, something personal. Um, a pretty big part of my life is that I have a challenge going on, which is to run every day. The rules are pretty simple, just run every day. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the rules. Huh? And um, with GitHub Actions, I have like, 
uh, found a tool which makes it possible for me to like really um, visualize this and like do like a like a journal. And uh, I just did this recently after I had like um, so many days. I, I started doing this, and what it will do is it will just um, with a scheduled action fetch all the um, the run from Strava, and then also do like some geocoding, like figure out where was it, and uh, like adds the weather. So that's a cool thing that you can do. Also, I think um, my Twitter profile is one of the most uh, unique ones in that it changes its uh, image every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, how I did it is uh, using this script on the right. And it's not so easy to read, but it's all on GitHub at the end. No worries, you will um, get the example. Um, yeah, of course I figure out, is it uh, day or night in Zurich? So if it's night, it might show in dark mode, you know? <laughs> dark mode? Um, and then it uh, like fetches a random gradient from this gradient joy API. I get like a picture of me, if I do black or white shirt. Composite it, post it to the Twitter API, um, use the like, a similar workflow file for GitHub, and like GitHub will automatically update my profile picture and also like randomize my bio a bit with like <laughs> uh, random numbers every day. And uh, yeah, in order to make this GIF, I had to like take a screenshot every day. I also automated it using GitHub Actions, <laughs> but like. Uh, <laughs> Headless Chrome and Puppeteer and like upload it to S3. You know, I'm on my GitHub. <laughs> okay, so before we round it up, let's talk a little bit about pricing. As I said, um, you get a certain amount of minutes per month for free. Um, in my opinion, GitHub has the most generous free tier um, of all providers. For public repositories, everything, everything is free. And uh, I have 3,000 minutes per month for free. And then on the right, you see the pricing um, of what you pay if you go over the limit. Um, what is notable is that on Mac OS, it's 10 times as expensive. So it's kind of a, that will quickly run up your bill if you have to do this for iOS apps, for example. There's also the option of uh, self hosting your. Uh, the machines that it runs on. And uh, yeah, I started using GitHub Actions when it was in uh, beta, and then it was all free. And uh, like, I was so in love with it, I built like cron jobs that would like run for like five hours, and I, I would uh, run them every day. And then of course, unlike most normal people, I would quickly exceed the limit. And uh, once they started charging for it, there's like, I was, uh, <laughs> I was, I was uh, starting to sweat a little bit. Um, like, I calculated it would have cost me like two thousand dollars per year to like keep it running. So I opted for the self-hosted runners first, just on DigitalOcean. But then I uh, had the idea since I got uh, the new MacBook recently, I could use my old MacBook, install some runners on it. Um, it would then like, look like this. Currently, there's like a GitHub restriction so that for every repository, you have to like, add the runner separately. So I have like 12 of them here. <laughs> <laughs> install them all on my laptop. I also put my like, this cafe in eight script oh, so that the Mac doesn't sleep. And then, yeah, I just close the laptop, always keep it plugged in, and then like um, stow it somewhere, put it out. <laughs> <laughs> out of sight and uh, no problem and now I pay nothing at all. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, um, that's it. Thank you for uh, uh, listening to my talk. Uh, I have a lot of examples, even ones that are not, like, uh, that I've not shown on uh, GitHub and I try to make as much as possible public so I can just copy paste. Uh, like I said, on Medium I wrote a post on how to uh, better get iOS and Android apps running. In general, I know this might not